Welcome artistic friends to Monet Cafe. Today's lesson is going to be a fun one. It's a technique I love, combining painting with watercolor and pastel. It makes for a really neat impressionistic feel. Uh, the texture I like of actually using watercolor paper. So stay tuned and learn more about this lesson. Also, please subscribe if you like this channel. Click the little bell icon if you want to get more of these learning artistic videos coming your way. Let's get started. Now I'm just getting started with a basic sketch on a piece of regular watercolor paper, nothing uh, expensive or fancy, and it's a 5 by 7 piece of watercolor paper. Uh, you want to anatomically get things in correctly. Uh, I also want to give photo credit to um, Deborah Underwood, the photographer from pmp-art.com. It's a great website to be able to get free reference images um, to create your own paintings from. Um, so check it out. I've turned on a lot of people to that website. It's really great. Now, um, again, I'm just, most of this is going to get erased, um, but I still want to get in a basic idea uh, of where things are to get it correct. Nothing's worse than, you know, you might have beautiful color and value and all these things correct, but if your um, figure, whether it's animal or people, uh, is not correct, it's already getting off with a weak foundation. So, and here I am just erasing it because I just want it as a guide. Now here's the watercolors that I like and I use. I'm going slowly over them in case you want to pause it or slow down and look at the colors. I love the uh, uh, da Vinci, which I have more of at the bottom, and I love M. Graham watercolors too. So you can kind of see my uh, arrangement of colors, and then in a minute I'm going to show you my little uh, travel palette. It's nothing expensive. Um, and these are, you know, some of the hues that I have in the Da Vinci. Um, I love the Quinacridone Gold, that orange one there that's about to go off the screen. That's a gorgeous color. So, uh, and I do a lot of mixing with these colors too. Notice there's no purples in there. I make my own purples. I even make my own blacks. So there's my messy palette that I actually showed after I painted this. So um, I'm sorry I can't show the watercolor palette at the same time while I'm painting. I'm not really set up for that. But I've actually mixed my own brown here out of uh, like an ultramarine blue and uh, I believe a little bit of a sienna color. Um, and I keep changing the consistency of it um, to get it lighter or darker. And this is basically like a little value sketch I'm getting in with watercolor. Um, if you haven't used watercolor a lot, start with just some simple things. Play around. There's tons of videos on YouTube to get better at watercolor. I, I didn't used to love watercolor. Um, I was primarily a pastel artist, but I, I started seeing other artists do watercolor underpaintings and uh, I struggled with watercolor for a while because watercolors, in some ways, it's got some things different than pastels. Uh, typically, you work light to dark, and in pastels, you typically work dark to light. It's not always that way, but you know, it's just like with any other medium. You just play, have fun, and uh, don't get so serious at the beginning, and then eventually, it just all comes together. And the thing that I like about a watercolor underpainting is the looseness. You can really get that painterly feel um, quite early in a painting and uh, watercolor just has that as a, a real asset to that particular medium. So I'm just going to play some music, keep sketching here. All I'm doing is sketching, getting it in and I'm going to get the background in in a little while and then I'll show you my technique soon of how to apply pastels and a product you can use. If you've seen my videos before, you probably already know what it is that will actually make your watercolor paper a little more gritty to hold um, the pastels because pastels don't adhere really well to watercolor paper, but there's some tips and some tricks to make that work. So enjoy the sketch process here with the watercolor and stay tuned for the pastel application. At this point, I pretty much have the bird, um, you know, the basic idea of the bird in. And now I'm going to be adding some background colors 
um, keeping it really loose and impressionistic. And so notice I just, I'm actually wetting the back of the, the watercolor paper there. You notice I wet all of the front around the bird. Um, it's gonna be a wet application of watercolor. And then I just wet the back so that the paper doesn't warp as bad. It kind of straightens the paper out by wetting the back of it like that. So what I'm doing is just adding um, just some colors to give me a, a mood and a feel. I really liked these pale blues and um, these yellowy greens. Um, so I'm, I'm just getting um, a feeling going right now. And the neat thing about watercolor is I'm, I'm applying what may look like tree trunks. And um, because I had the paper already wet, that's just going to soak into the paper and you're not going to have any real distinct lines. Uh, it's going to be really loose and um, moody. <laughs> um, so that's a just kind of a neat thing about watercolor. So if you put, do a, a wet on wet application like that, um, you're already going to get that impressionistic feel. I love it when you can push the background back into the distance and keeping it loose without a lot of uh, lines or detail is what's really going to help accomplish that illusion. Now I've zoomed in a little bit here. I wanted you to be able to see more um, just kind of how I'm working the background. Still the, the paper is still wet in the background, but I wanted to add some more color. Even though that little chickadee is a little uh, dull in color. That's a chickadee, by the way. I love those birds. Um, I'm adding this, I think that's a phthalo blue, um, and it's just giving a little bit more life to it. Uh, I wanted to keep kind of the area around his head light, almost like the trees were kind of up around him, but there's a little... Uh, opening in the trees um, behind his head there that kind of draws the eye in to make his head the focus his or her I'm not sure what this bird is <laughs> um, but even though the bird uh, at this point I'm mostly using local color which means the color that's actually in the bird um, you'll see when I add the pastel um, if you've watched many of my videos you know I just love color and um, you can take artistic license and add all kinds of interesting colors uh, particularly in the shadows and so you'll see how I get fun and creative with color later um, I will let you know that uh, my camera did cut off before I finished all of the pastel in this uh, but you should see I know you'll see enough of it to see how to do this yourself so there's plenty of video for that um, but anyway I'm just I'm having fun with the watercolor I've really gotten to where I enjoy watercolor now but I do believe the pastel is just like the icing on the cake with this so um, a little bit more of this watercolor and then we'll get started on the pastel And now, um, before I get too carried away with the sketch, I decided I better stop. <laughs> and uh, here's where I'm gonna apply the product, which is the Clear Gesso. 
that's going to help the pastel stay to that watercolor paper. If you've watched many of my videos, you know I use this product a lot. It's great if you're working on a budget and, um, oh, here's a flat brush that I'm going to be using to apply it with. I also will use a, a round brush too. And, uh, and just a cup of water, that's all you need. But again, I use the, uh, the Gesso is a great product where you can take cheap watercolor paper and the clear gesso and really if you're on a budget and can't afford the expensive pastel papers a lot of them are quite expensive um, this is a neat way uh, affordable way to be able to uh, make your own pastel surface in a pinch like this um, now I'm just using the flat brush to brush around the bird mostly um, and my main reasoning for that was I literally just painted some of that darker actually that wasn't a black I that was a black I created with some of the watercolor um, and I know it's still a little wet you see it kind of came off there so I'm just going around him for that reason um, that part I know was kind of dry and it's okay if it blends a little like that did it kind of adds to that soft painterly feel but now I'm gonna take that little um, round brush and get more into the detail um, and a lot of times I'll put the clear gesso in a little bowl or something but in this case you saw I just I'm applying it directly to the brush just to you know for ease and because um, I didn't feel like getting up and getting a bowl <laughs> um, so again this is just a little bit of a more of a detail work to make sure that doesn't get all muddy in the background now if you notice the eye um, I had it whited out for a while just to remember where the eye was, but the eye's really black in the uh, original photograph. Um, but what's going to make it stand out is when I add that little bit of reflection to the eye. I'm going to add that with a, a little piece of uh, white pastel later. So uh, he's, here's the pastels I'm going to be using. The long, skinnier ones are new pastels. They're harder pastels, and those are great for working on surfaces that aren't real gritty. Um, now I've got, now obviously I let this dry. The clear gesso is dry at this point. Um, but I've got the gesso on it now, so this, uh, this pastel is going to adhere a little more to the watercolor paper. It will a little bit without the clear gesso, but the gesso just uh, helps that to stay more. And um, I'm playing around with some values here. I know that in the tree areas, there's going to be some darker values where there's, you know, branches and um, leaves and things. So uh, just to create a little bit more interest instead of having the background totally um, uh, pale in value, um, I just wanted to give it a little bit of freedom, flowing branches, and um, create some interest there so the bird isn't the only dark thing in this and I, I soften all that up too. Now notice the texture that you're seeing. I'm using, this is the rough side of the watercolor paper and some people don't like the texture. I, in certain times that I'm painting, um, happen to really like texture in it. I think it, it just gives that um, impressionistic feel to a piece. Um, I think I ended up moving the branch down a little bit at the end here. I noticed some things was a little bit off, um, but for the most part, I'm just, um, kind of lightly, a light touch here, getting still in the values. This is kind of a, a brownish colored. The underside of that branch he's sitting on is pretty dark. There's a lot of shadow under that branch. So um, I'm flipping the pastel around here too. Sometimes you got to work with a little finesse to work with these edges. Pardon my hair sticking out. <laughs> it makes the camera uh, focus on my crazy hair there. I don't know why. I haven't learned to get consistent about pulling my hair back I don't know but anyway enjoy a little bit more of this process while I'm just kind of lightly um, applying pastels um, and still keeping this very uh, impressionistic I'm not looking to get a lot of detail in this and that's what's great about the watercolor paper it really helps with that
here's the point where I start to add a little color to the bird rather than what is uh, just in the photograph. Blues and purples are often great uh, for shadow areas. You know, usually in the shadows, colors are cooler. And, um, and I also, I don't know what it is. I can look at something like this bird and sometimes see colors that they just feel right. You know, um, like I was seeing some mauvey magentas in him. And um, I don't know, I just think it's really gonna make it a lot more fun. And uh, that's what art's all about. We don't have to necessarily paint exactly what we see. Uh, that's the beauty of creation. So um, getting close to wrapping this up again, uh, I apologize. I did not get most of the rest of this painting done before you see the final, but you get the idea. You can see um, kind of in general uh, how to apply the watercolor to regular watercolor paper, then the clear gesso, and then pastels. And I just think pastels and watercolor work so well together. So I hope you will try this if you haven't already. I do have a few other videos on combining watercolor and pastels. And um, you know, you can go back through my videos and find those if you'd like. I would like to eventually create some playlists where if you're looking for a particular type of lesson, I can have them in a playlist. Um, trying to get some things back together and a little more um, organization in my life so i appreciate all of you subscribers who have hung in there i am not going anywhere i'm going to keep making videos and if you haven't already joined monet cafe art group on facebook i think you would love that it's a great group so here's the final you can see the color and how brilliant and bold i got with it and this was a fun little painting so i hope you try please subscribe come back soon and happy painting